it is tonight's local angle another another part of our show that i know that you love it draws things into kent of course and it's mm. something uh very close to home it's uh it's based around the uh, pubs of uh, faversham something that we are both aware of something mm. that we both have spent time in and it is the tale of uh the distinguished gentleman indeed um so this is this is a very old story and it is i i believe i'm right in saying a one of those times where the the name might lead people to believe something that isn't really part of the story because though the gentleman in question is undeniably distinguished in the sense of being um a man of means as he's described that's not actually what the word is being used for here it's kind of a play on words i suppose um, people often do that with with things that they find interesting or curious no in this case when they say the distinguished gentleman what they mean is a gentleman who can be for some reason easily distinguished from any other gentleman it is it is an astonishing thing so i mean you you have um feelers out in the local community as well when did you first encounter this one this was um the first i ever heard of it was when i was out drinking on a new year's eve night now you know that i'm loath to spend time in pubs because you never know who's listening and of course alcohol lowers uh your ability to be careful mm. and your ability to keep the truth that should be kept quiet quiet mm. but i allow myself out from time to time and i was invited out and i despite thinking better of it i did go out on um new year's eve of um 2016 and um while there in a in a certain pub in faversham which uh, i'll decide whether we can go into them specifically later depending on how our dear chatter are taken to the town um i heard tell of you know, so it, was, it was talked around almost like a uh, like a mascot i suppose a, a town mascot of this distinguished gentleman hmm. who would um show up in pubs and uh, would be sat in the corner and would join people in conversation but would spend the whole evening sat nursing uh, a sherry or something of the type uh, who would very much stand out due to his his attire and the mm. way he acted. Mm. And I didn't think much of it. But although I did not see him that night, at least three people came over to him that evening and told me that they had seen him that evening in yes. that pub. Mm. Um, I believe you've also had a, 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 a close run thing with the distinguished gentleman indeed and and this actually was what piqued my interest in the first instance because you know how um if you socialize if you go out particularly into crowded places like pubs you will encounter people who talk about that man you know the one down the pub and then everyone says which one? Oh, you know the the guy with the hat or the guy with the dog or the guy with you know whatever um and that's usually not enough information and then they say oh you know he usually sits in the corner and he you know he's often with that woman with with the red hair or whatever and eventually you nail it down to the point where everyone recognizes who you're talking about but this was a remarkable case i was sitting there with a group of friends and obviously i'd seen the man in the pub just a couple of nights earlier and i noted him he was distinguished and i didn't really pay it much thought 
And then a few nights later, we were discussing that evening. And one of my friends said, you know, that, uh, that uh, saw that man down the pub uh, a couple of days ago. And we were talking about this, you know, the man I mean, and almost like a choir singing, everyone at the table went, yes, I know the one you mean. And suddenly we realized that we all did. That even though only a couple of us had spoken with him, and I unfortunately missed my opportunity to do so, uh, I so wish I had uh, struck up a conversation with the man. It was um, a, a startling, startling revelation that simply saying, you know that man from the other day, if everyone around the table immediately says, yes, that is a distinguished gentleman. And I don't think I'd ever seen it quite that way before. Not for somebody who hadn't, you know, set themselves on fire in the street or, you know, something remarkable that would attract the attention of everybody. Um, the distinguished gentleman doesn't appear to just drink in one pub. And this is very uncommon for those that don't know British drinking culture too well. If uh, when you are within a town and you're, you're drinking, you're a regular drinker in a town, you tend to have your regular haunts. You may have your absolute local, and then you may have um, another one or two semi locals uh, for different situations. So you may drink in one pub very regularly, another two or three semi-regularly and then the odd one if you're with a group of people or such like um but the distinguished gentleman has been seen regularly in every single pub in faversham mm. which as you know rick is no mean feat it is a remarkable feat especially given how they are pubs cater to different crowds they cater to different groups of people these these pubs are not necessarily all aimed at the same kind of resident and yet exactly this he drinks freely everywhere and everywhere he goes is instantly distinguished it is it is an eerie thought that there is a man like that out there I'm tempted to find out what he drinks. Well, from those that I had that evening with, who spoke to me, they all said sherry. Um, but often the reports don't from people don't go into the drinks because it's not. You don't tend to go over to someone and dip your finger in a drink and lick it to find out what they're drinking. Uh, not if you value your <laughs> finger, no. Exactly, and um, similar spirits can look um, similar colours, even if they're different. You, know, you can't always tell a, a lager or an ale that somebody's drinking just from the liquid in the glass, of course. I um, don't know. But um, it's certainly something of that variety, and uh, people say it suits his distinguished nature, easily, to, easily distinguished quite well it's not a drink mm. that many people drink regularly in pubs at that time of evening indeed and it does seem at least from my recollection of him as i laid eyes upon him maybe he doesn't drink something that anyone else in the pub would drink maybe this is part of what makes him distinguished uh, as you say, sherry is actually that not that common in pubs anymore. And he may drink sherry, but if he were in a pub which had sherry, perhaps he'd drink rum or whatever. You know, he would change his drink to be distinguished. Mm. Now, the, um, the other fascinating thing is people may say, well, maybe he just has a glass at numerous pubs in one night. That's why it's just his thing. He likes to get the vibe of, a, of different pubs over an evening and then go home. But um, all the sightings are within an hour window. 
generally, unless there's a special event, everything is hmm. squished in. This is what it appears to be. And we know when he's there, because if you literally walked into a pub um, in Faversham and said, uh, on a night you'd seen him in one pub, you walk into a pub on the other side of town and leant in the door and said, did anybody see that guy yesterday? Everyone would immediately go, yes. Um, because there is no one else you could possibly be talking about. He is the most distinguished. It is an amazing thing. Um, eerie and spooky. And it may, in fact, be completely unique to Faversham. My researches have dug up nothing quite like it anywhere else. Now, there's even records going back to pubs that no longer uh, trade or exist in the mm. town or have gone under new management and new names that he um, he drank there when they were when they were still running as pubs which suggests that this is not a very modern thing and perhaps the distinguished gentleman has been drinking at the same time the same drink in all these pubs for mm. quite a number of years it gets weirder than that though if you remember we were talking not that long ago um to someone who lives uh, on the other side of Faversham Creek in a building which until relatively recently was a pub. I say relatively Ooh. recently, 20 years ago. And that's now a private house. And yet, one day, walk downstairs um, from you know having a <clears throat> bath in the evening to find the distinguished gentleman sitting in their living room drinking as if he'd been there when it was a pub and it still is in his mind it's uh, it's astonishing this ties very much into there's a there's a house for sale in the Ospringe part of uh, Faversham at the minute and it's an old pub that's been converted into houses and there was a story that went round that as people being shown around by the estate agent there was a gentleman sitting in the room that used to be the bar, that is now the mm. living room, sat in the corner drinking what looks like a sherry. Mm. And the only report back was from the viewer. I, I was very confused, but he looked very e easily distinguishable. Yes. Yes, I, I think this is it. You, if if he, he is remarkably someone who you never see anywhere but in a pub, or possibly a former pub, but... But yet, if 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 you were worried about um, a threat he might pose, and a police officer walked in and said, "So could anybody give me a description?" Everybody would immediately chorus, "Yes." Um, it it's undeniable that he is a completely identifiable, easily distinguished individual. A police officer who was looking for him and happened to walk into a pub where he was would immediately go, "Ah, it's you." <laughs> It, it isn't possible to mistake him for anyone else. And yet, there are three main facts that have always remained true about him. Firstly, no one knows his name. Exactly. Secondly, no one has ever seen him walking down the street. No. And thirdly, no one knows where this gentleman lives. Um, this is true. He also, I mean, I, I've only actually seen him once with my own eyes but people who've lived in this town for decades tell me that he's always looked that way and only some of us are blessed with such good genes of course for that to, for that to happen oh yes i mean he, he is obviously um well well bred and distinguished very much so i think do you see it as a good thing for a town like Faversham to have a, a gentleman, a distinguished gentleman like this, among their patronage? Well, I, I have to say, it is a very good conversation starter. Um, and next time I lay eyes upon him, I will try to actually engage him in conversation because I'm excited to be able to talk to other people and say you know what i heard from that man and when they say which man i say you know the one and they'll all go yes i do um i'm i'm excited to be able to have that conversation and i want to hear what he says but as far as we're aware other than some 
slight moments of social awkwardness and creepiness, he does seem quite harmless. Genial small talk, I've heard about him. Of course, unlike you, I've never seen him myself, but the weather, the local horse race, uh, a spot of cricket, mm. um, a minor gossip of the pub, mm. but very short, but polite conversation. I mean, naturally, as soon as I realised that this was potentially a person, or an apparition, or even a threat, um, I immediately consulted my, my copy of uh, Verity's uh, Pandemonicon. Ooh. And, um, and, and there is nothing like that in here. There is no reason to believe that this is a, a threat of any, of, of any dangerous proportion. Perhaps, perhaps people would come to Faversham simply on the off chance of, of seeing such a distinguished gentleman. And those who've spoken with him seem to remember the conversation vividly and talk about it avidly. Um, and obviously, everyone knows who they mean. In my mind, while some things we, we look at are clearly government conspiracy, hmm. As, as with Doug, of course. Um, mm. Some things we look at are, are terrifying tales, either things that we believe to be true or, or well-intentioned in, well wives' tales to terrify children. Again, yes. which have their own place in, in our world, of course. Um, for me, the power in this is the seeming harmlessness of the distinguished gentleman that this is not malicious, that it's not anything to be feared or worried by, but perhaps something that we should just accept, that towns should be pleased to have the distinguished gentleman. And I would love to be able to leave it at that. I really would. But whenever anyone says, isn't it nice, isn't it beautiful isn't it charming isn't it kind about anything in my mind i think that's how it hunts and i cannot i cannot get past the possibility just the possibility that there is a threat here greater than anything we've faced before i I see your concerns, and I know there are a few tales of um, sh shadowy figures in the toilets after dark, and of broken glasses and such like, but for me, I haven't yet been able to link the two together. Of course. and. Nobody seems to say a bad word about him. And because of his nature, it's not as if he could be a threat or a monster visibly and then be mistaken for someone else. Well, he's easily distinguished. Indeed. It's, it's, a, it's a true conundrum. But I'm eagerly looking for our next meeting. I, I rigorously and dutifully spend many evenings in the pubs of Faversham um, you're doing, in you're... my ongoing pursuit of this of, of this matter and I will continue to do so for as long as it takes it's no matter the second. selfless research Rick selfless mm. research um, I'm glad that you've seemingly taken this subject as your primary concern someone should do and I, I think and you're the man to do it um, I, I, I believe I'm up to the mm. challenge I, I have been training for this my whole life. If, um, to finish, um, if you saw the distinguished gentleman on one of your next trips to a, a Fabrician pub, mm -hmm. be it um, in a month's time or week's time, <laughs> or in 20 minutes' time, um, and you saw the distinguished gentleman in the corner and you approached him, 
what would you ask him? I, as you can imagine, have spent a long time thinking about this and wondering, you know, how long would I get to speak with him? How many questions would I have time to ask? And so I've decided that on the off chance that I would only have one, one question, one thing I could put before him. I have decided to come up with that question, which is not only the best arbiter of a person's morality and ethics, their very soul, but is also a question that is acceptable to ask, despite its depth of analysis, in a pub, in case he will only have small talk pub conversations. So I will ask him, who do you support? I think on that note, it's perfect. We shall go to the final question of the evening. Um, now, this one is slightly different because Rick has seen the distinguished gentleman firsthand, mm. and I have been in pubs where he has been talked about and seen, but I have not yet seen him with my own eyes. And I think we will both believe that this distinguished gentleman exists in some guys. Uh, I guess the question is more, is he just a man who wanders home at night and just happens to visit lots of pubs? Or is there something more to the distinguished gentleman? Rick, do you believe that there is something more to the distinguished gentleman, more than meets the eye? It is so clear to me that were there a reason to accept that he were nothing more than a man, he simply could not be so easily distinguished, I believe. I and this is might be a first for us that all night we have um, taken the same route I think it's been a fascinating night in that and again I'm biased but I believe that there is a lot to the distinguished gentleman for a man to be so distinguishable and gentlemanly in many pubs around town at the same time it's turning up in buildings that once were pubs but no longer are that is the most fascinating point for me mm. and so i believe as a lot of chat does it seems uh, half and half it seems mm. um we invite we invite <laughs> our dear truth forgers once they've passed their test once they've sent back their urine and their blood and their do you still want um the, the sperm. As, as I say, I, I truthfully don't know what came over me. Uh, in which case, um, just, just the urine and the uh, just blood. Just the urine and the blood, I think. If I mean, we we have had a, a couple of um, of potential followers who um, insisted on sending us urine, e even when we begged them to stop. Um, hmm. So, so just a small sample and only once, please. And uh, through the tubs that we've sent you, not in balloons thrown at Rick's door. Yes, ideally not that either. Um, but please, um, once or, once you've all passed, um, we we welcome you down to Faversham, where you can hunt for the distinguished gentleman at, at your pleasure. 